Hello, everyone. Good evening. Buenas noches. Um, welcome to Latino Theater Company Live. I'm your host, Javi Moreno. And today we'll be having a conversation about solitude. But before we get into that, I just want to give you all some quick reminders. 
If you did have not watched Premeditation, tomorrow is your last day to watch it on demand. August 27th, we will remove that from online at 11.59 p.m. You can visit our website at youtube.com forward slash Latino Theater Company or our website, thelatc.org live forward slash live so you can watch it. You can watch it anytime from right now all the way until tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Also, on today's conversation with Solitude, you have until September 3rd to watch it on demand. It's when you can pause, you can go grab more snacks, you can go to the restroom and come back and the actor will still be in the same position. You just gotta hit play and uh, open more bags of chips. And also <laughs> tomorrow we will have a discussion with August 29 participants. Some August 29 participants. This is gonna be a funny one, funny one here. Friday, August 28th. You can watch our first online reading of August 29th here where you're watching us now, youtube.com forward slash Latino Theater Company or the LATC.org live. We have a lot, a lot of amazing events happening next month, all the way, leading us all the way to the end of the year, if you can believe it. Coming up after August 29th, we have La Olla, then the last Agri Brown Hat. This is A Man's World, written and performed by Sal Lopez, a world premiere of She, which was gonna be in our fall lineup, La Victima, a new reading of Evelina Fernandez's Sleep with the Angels, archival presentation of our home, of a play called Home, uh, which was in our season last spring, an online reading of Just Like Us, video presentation of The Mother of Henry, and plus much more. So visit our website, thelatc.org, for all this wonderful information. But today, we're gonna go kick start it with Solitude. Remember, if you have a question, type it in the comment section and we'll try to answer it at 7.50 p.m. Mas o menos. Here we go, bringing up our playwright, Evelina Fernandez. We have Yerbeni, Jeff Fidel, and Lucy Rodriguez. Hello. Hey. How's everyone doing? Good, good. <laughs> Good. All right, so let's kick this. Uh, let's let's, good, let's kick man. this off. Uh, all right, <laughs> I'm Javi Moreno, um, and I am your host tonight. It was a pleasure watching. Actually, my first time watching Solitude. I didn't get to watch the live session, so I was really excited to finally get to watch it. And uh, let's go across the room, Emelina. Kick us off. Yeah. Uh, well, um, what do you mean? Did you do something? What am I doing? Yes, let's introduce ourselves. Yeah, introduce okay. ourselves. Okay, I'm Evelina Fernandez, and I'm the playwright of the play, and it was uh, created collectively with the Latino Theater Company, and I also play uh, Ramona in the in Solitude. Something's crunching. Oh, wow. Yeah, somebody's crunching some chips over there. Is somebody <laughs> crunching something? There you go. Some earphones are crunching, <laughs> crunching earphones. It's all good. All right, uh, Sal and Yerbeni, if you can introduce yourself, please. Oh, wait, you're muted. That's you're, muted. Once, you're muted. Uh, movement no, coordinator, Yerbeni oh. Lucero, movement coordinator slash choreographer, company. What is that? <laughs> it's not you guys. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> Okay. Hi, I'm Sal, and uh, I'm part of the ensemble. All right. And you play um, Johnny in the play. I play Johnny, yeah. I have one here, then. <laughs> I wonder what that noise is. I know. Oh, there it is. Try it. Go ahead, Lucy. Um, hi, Lucy Rodriguez, and like Sal and Jeff, I'm an associate artistic director with the Latino Theater Company, and I uh, was in Solitude, and I played Sonia. All right. Fidel, is Fidel frozen? He looks frozen. Yeah, he's frozen. Uh, so, you know, you gotta, you can't trust these actors. Sometimes they're, <laughs> they're method on Zoom and they freeze. I think he is. <laughs> I think he is frozen. Oh, he's, uh, we'll bring him back in a couple of minutes. Jeff, if you can introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jeff Rivas, uh, company member, uh, producer, director, writer, actor, uh, toilet installer, all the above. <laughs> all around handyman. 
Who, who did you play in Solitude? Uh, who did I play? Eddie? No. Um, <laughs> Gabriel. Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> this is already starting. It's been a while. Oh, wow. he, he was it's been a while least. since. <laughs> when was actually let's 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 uh, uh when was this production i don't think we mentioned the year um if, so for those that that have not watched solitude you can still watch it the latc.org we premiered it um online yes last night but when was that production that that was um that we showed <laughs> film does anybody remember 2009 2009 wow yeah, it, wow it was it was five five no, four years after the big immigration march. And right, so, and that was in 2005, right? 2005. Yeah, huh? Yeah, 2009. Uh, so, but we, okay. when I think we started developing it like maybe the year before. Does anybody remember? I, I think we did because the, the video stuff came in after the fact. You know, you were, that, yeah. that, you brought that in. Right. Yeah. 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 So what we're gonna be talking about tonight is, uh, our theme is entering the labyrinth of solitude, exploring how the Latino Theater Company develops its work um, with the cast. Um, as you all mentioned, a lot of you are members, company members. But I think one of the, the, the interesting things that, and as audience members are going to see from like this production, 2009, moving like premeditation, if you saw it last week, um, and we were talking about this earlier, has a lot of the elements, this is where a lot of the new elements that Jose Luis and the Latino Theater Company's like um, featured work ha uh, started, right? You started introducing a lot of this stuff. Evelina, wh where did the idea of solitude come from? Um, <clears throat> well, I had this idea and I don't, I, I can't really remember the, you know, the beginning of it, but I, I wanted to write, there were so many of, uh, people that I knew that had kind of um, lost touch with where they came from kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so people who um, were uh, very concerned about success and, and all of that, and, and, and then kind of lost touch with um, their roots, I guess, their neighborhood roots more than anything. And so, um, and I, I also was reading Labyrinth of Solitude, which is a series of essays by Octavio Paz. And, right. the, themes, and the themes that he covers in, in uh, those essays. And those essays um, explore um, me Mexican thought, right? And things that, and I say we because we're Mexican Americans, but things that um, he observed about who we are as a people. So um, I started out by uh, writing a bunch of um, monologues, right? So they were, they were monologues. And uh, I think the sound is coming from Fidel. Yeah, because yeah. When, when, when you came back you on. Were fine. <laughs> when you were You were good on the internet. It started. Um, so I started out with a series of monologues. I wrote a monologue for Johnny, wrote a monologue for um, Mona. Actually, the, the monologue that, that I, that I uh, perform in the play, the one about being abducted, I had written that monologue like a few years before. Um, somebody had asked me to um, write a monologue about my community, and so I wrote that, and then I always liked it. So I said, um, I'm gonna bring it back for that, for that play. And then, and then we started workshopping and I, and I didn't have a monologue for Robert. So, oh, right. so he was the last monologue that I wrote. And then it was like, what's his name? And I didn't have a name for him. So I just put the man, right? Because <laughs> uh, Jose Luis said, well, Robert is going to come into the process. So that's how he landed up with the name, the man. And then it, for a long time, it was just the man. And then I thought, well, what is his name? Man, man. Okay, Manolo. His name is Manolo. So that's how that happened. And then and then we started workshopping it. Why don't you talk about the workshop, Jeff? Uh, well, again, yeah. this, uh, we lost Fidel. We lost Fidel. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Uh, the, the, this was our second uh, play and our second workshop. We had done uh, three workshops of dementia prior to 
uh, mm. giving its final performance. And what we took from that, we brought to um, to this. Although Jose Luis keeps adding things, uh, I remember coming into rehearsal one time, and there was a taped off floor of a maze with a lot of books. And uh, you know, uh, I I know <laughs> that not everybody knows how our process works, but uh, a lot of times before we even get to the text it's all movement and finding how we move in that space and what that space does to us and you, uh, and what that style might be uh and then yerbeni helps uh jose luis and they collaborate and say no i like what sal is doing there but add what jeff's doing and what lucy's doing and then that's how we find sort of the aesthetic of what that movement. In fact, Solitude is the first play that we did where uh, we were never still. Uh, we were mm. all in the same space, but uh, when a scene was going on, maybe on stage right, everyone to the left of them was still moving, but in a slow motion as to not still focus, and yet that this, this world in that labyrinth was ongoing, so that at any point the lights could mm. shift and a scene would happen uh, at the same time. So all this stuff was going on at the same time. So Jose Luis brought this idea of continual movement. So that was a play as an actor was really interesting that you never stop no matter what. Uh, from the, the minute we started that play, there was constant movement, which was really cool right. in, terms, in, in terms of then how even in our transitions, the movement even uh, exemplified that. And, we never, and, that's, left, and that's, we never left the stage either. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we, uh, I'm wrong. I guess no, we did. We did when we went to go see Juana, right? Right. But most of the time we were, we were there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, well what was, and then um, after the funeral, we all exit the stage at some point. You guys are in the limo. You exit the limo. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was what very was, brief. Yeah, very brief. What was, what we didn't have any stage time. Evelina, so you, the first rehearsal in the workshops, you came in with these monologues. It wasn't necessarily like the a, 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 a finished script, and each actor had its the their monologues, and then just took it, and then with with as an ensemble, you guys all built this play, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that um, we did the workshop. You know, it, when you're workshopping something, you're just experimenting with what the style is, what the possibilities are, right? What are the mm -hmm. possibilities of the style? What are the possibilities of movement? What are the possibilities of story? How can we keep developing, you know, the monologues? How can we uh, uh, create a narrative that connects them all? So kind of that's right. what the process of the workshop was, to kind of create a narrative that connected those monologues and then and then create you know a story out of you know a, a beginning middle and end of all that but if you if, if you watch it like i again i'd never seen it <laughs> <laughs> right because so, i was in it so it was so much fun to watch it you know and watch it you know lucy and jeff and sal and robert and pivet and semi on playing yeah. Cello was so awesome. I love that. And then, how did, how, yeah, go ahead. How was how how was that? Um, I mean, I I think that after that, I think we uh you did la was la victima that had um on stage live performer, but was was solitude one of the first times that you had like an actual performer? No, I don't think no, so. No, because we had dementia. Yeah. Well, we had the backstage, but we had live mm. performers for dementia. Yeah, we've Remember? had live performers before, but this oh, was cool. one of the, I think, one of the first times where we, well, that's not true either. But but I think <laughs> the difference was that actually he was kind of a focal point. Uh, he was a character in the play. Part of the story. He was a character. He, yeah. he was a character. He was very much an integral part of the piece. Uh, you know, he's the character of, of, of Cello, and and really, what happened was that the, before we started the workshop, um, we Semyon and had performed there at the Los Angeles Theater Center, mm. and and he was so dynamic, you know, he, uh, that uh, we were so impressed with him, and then uh, Jose Luis invited him to come and be part of the workshop, and, mm -hmm. and that's how that's how he became part of that. And so he just started to, you know, my compadre would say, Jose Luis would say, you know, 
play something under this under this scene, mm. and and before you know it, he had scored the whole the whole play basically. And yeah, that, and then wow. when he comes in live um, with the Perez Prado music, that's that really it's so it elevates the music, it elevates the play. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah, I, I, I was my first time watching it yesterday, and I was just like, "What? What's what? That that mixing is amazing. What's going yeah. on?" Yeah. And then, uh, Fidel, how's it going? Good. Uh, better now, I think. Can you guys <laughs> hear me? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting over back here texting. Um, I love you can introduce yourself. Um, name, who'd you play in this uh, in, in solitude? Uh, yeah, my name is Fidel Gomez. Uh, I played Angel. Um, yeah, I, I came into the project a little bit later because I was not part of the original workshop, but um, but I was fortunate enough to be in it uh, in several incarnations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you, you all got to, you did it in Los Angeles. You took it to the Bay, Denver, and Miami. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So you got to, yeah. you got to tour this one. Um, so what? Yeah, you said the, yeah. The Bay. So, well, yeah, in the Bay Area was San Francisco and San Jose, right? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah. what is, what is, Fidel, one of the things that we're talking about is, is sort of the process of going um, as a company, you know, from the first rehearsal to performance, getting this, you know, not sort of, you know, like a, a, a finished script, but getting these monologues and these stories and you're having live instruments. And then what was, um, and, and for everybody, uh, that, that process, like of going from the first rehearsal all the way to, to the onstage performance, even into um, um, our live performance yesterday, right? Which we, we, we also had to do some, some tweaks and sounds and stuff like that. What are some of the memories, stories that you all have remember of that process, or even as a company that, that have grown um, into the work, the staple that is Latino Theater Company? Don't be afraid. Again. Is that is that to Fidel or is that, yeah, that to everybody? Fidel? I'm just reminding Fidel <laughs> what, what, what our conversation was. Okay. So well, anyway, okay. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Go ahead, Fidel. <laughs> no, I was just going to say that. Um, I mean, obviously, there's always a lot of change and growth from the beginning of the process to when you actually put it on stage. Um, I think one of the biggest memories for me is. Um, you know, how much I like had to do slow motion. And there was like, you know, uh, my, my dad, the director has a style where, you know, while a scene is going on, he loves to have like other people in like ultra slow motion. And then like, you know, you're going to be like, no, 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 it's too fast. It's too fast. Like, oh, okay. Okay. I got to go slower. I got to go slower. And like, you know, it, at first it feels like almost like a chore in a way, but you know, like, when you see it from the from the audience, I think it, it's really impactful. And I think also like there's a part of it where like you just get in the zone with it, where like you start to actually, you know, make choices with your slow motion and like, you know, actually like try to carry an intention across a whole stage, you know, things like that. Those are the things I really remember. Yeah, I remember that, um, you know, your Bani, she makes lemonade out of lemons and it was, um, I don't know, I think it was, I don't remember if it was the first or the second rendition that we did, but uh, we were already either in tech or in preview, and I woke up that morning, and I got out of bed, and then I fell back on my bed, and I, I was like, what the hell happened? And went to the doctor, and I had some inner ear thing, and it was called labyrinthitis. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, okay, this is a good omen, right? And so I called Jose Luis and Evelina, and I think I sat, I sat a night out, and Monica Payne came in, one of Jose Luis's students, and and read my lines, did whatever. And then the next day, I went, I went, and uh, I was still kind of unsure about the whole thing. You have to dance at the beginning, and I remember I went to your buddy, and I said, "No, I'm. We're, we're all standing in the back in the dark." And it seems like we're standing a long time, you know, each one enters first. I said, Yerbani, can I sit down? And she goes, yeah, okay. And then she sat me down and she's like, you know, cross my legs a certain way, look a little way, <laughs> tilt my chin, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes, 
oh, I like that better. It breaks the line. That's better. We're going to keep it. And I was like, <laughs> yay, I get a chair. It's okay. <laughs> but, uh, but some things just, it, I mean, it's weird how things develop and then you actually use them for whatever reason. In terms of the so now you were, oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, just um, no, no. how I, I, I remember being approached by Jose Luis when we were in your Westwood apartment, uh, when you lived in Westwood. And he, he spoke of the music, which was really exciting. I get inspired yeah. by the music and, of course, by the, the actors. But um, that was a lot of fun using the music that we used. And um, as, as Evelina said the last, in the last conversation we had, you know, I, I have them move. We start moving. We always start with movement. And, and they started right. with their maze, their, their maze. There was a maze taped off on the floor, and you guys were just working with that. And then we started incorporating music. And I usually give... Um, just throw in steps, whether we're going to use them or not. Hopefully, we will use them to get an idea and a feel of the style. And like I said, it develops from there. Um, but back to the, the what was really difficult, like that was saying, was moving slowly because everybody has a different timing. So we've got to get the right. time down. As you can see in other areas as well, the looks and the stops and the the breaks. So and for Evelina and Fidel were taller and you know we were working on steps that were so short so you everyone had to adjust to that but that was very difficult i remember the timing of that was, was difficult which you really couldn't see a lot of that on the the um the show last night because they were pulling to the actor but there was always something happening everyone's moving and believe it or not that was could be very challenging or was very challenging yeah. right that's one of the things like in premeditation you kind of get to see the entire stage and this one it's it's sort of blocked in here where you don't i mean the, the space is massive <laughs> like it would be really cool for people to, to just if you've been to the space you get the idea of just how how large it is and you you probably have to go around uh fidel when you when after i think when lucy was talking you were giggling were you remembering uh some choreography um stories <laughs> no, I was just laughing because I, I don't think I'd ever been called the lemon before. No, I meant I will say, I mean, she said Germany makes it. lemonade out of lemons. I was like, man, are we like, I'm just I'm, I'm <laughs> no, no, like a no, bunch of lemons no. on the stage, like with I, legs, <laughs> all uncoordinated, yeah. like. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, not all of us are dancers like Sal, so Yerbeni has to work with what she has. Yeah, it's and oh. it's that's hard. That's no, hard. No. I, that's what I noticed last night. Like, it wasn't bad, right? But I was, <laughs> but I was thinking, well, poor Yerbeni. The only one, the only dancer she really had to work with was Sal, right? And the rest of them were just actors who, and then she she gets us to dance. But I mean, it, it wasn't bad, and and then I was thinking there. This must have been a. I don't remember when the, it was video. It was video, but um, I think it was an early version of it because I feel like we developed some stuff after that, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. also there were mm -hmm. you know I think we got a lot better with the looks and the and the entrances into the dances and stuff like that, but. Um, you know, so that's just the way. That's the nature of live theater. It's live, and if you if you record it, well, that's the performance that you get, right? Right. <laughs> Not like like you can do anything about it. Did any of you receive notes last night from? Huh? What? Did any of you receive notes from Jose Luis last night? <laughs> Well, so I think all uh, we don't remember who videotaped it, somebody on our staff or, or something, but I know that we were all thinking, man, why doesn't he just pull out? <laughs> well, because you never got to really see, and because we work well, so much with, with composition as a company, and we work so much with, you know, what the whole picture looks like, you were never able to see it in what you saw last night. And you yeah. were never able to see the set. It was a big white frame, you know, you weren't able to see that and you weren't able to see the projections on the wall. 
So yeah, part of that was uh, lesson learned. Lesson learned. Now we know. Whenever we do archival, we just do one camera, you know, back close to the audience. Yeah. yeah. And part of that also was the resolution of the camera. I mean, at uh, yeah. the cameras yeah. at that time. I mean, it was yeah. just. So, but but go, talking about choreography, I mean, I think also one of the elements is not you're not just dancing or going slow motion. You're also dancing with objects, right? Like with items, props, um, furniture. What is what is uh, that process like? <laughs> <You're beneath. laughs> There's always seems to be furniture and props. Um, well, we just have Tableo to get tableography, tableography, tableography. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I think once the actors, you know, they adjust so well and adapt very easily, this, this group here. And so I, I, once they get what it is they're working with and we figure it out, <coughs> it, it, they, they get it. But uh, yeah, it, it, it can be challenging. There have been other ones that are more challenging than this was. Actually, the timing and the looks and the, um, uh, that, that was a little bit more difficult, I think. And that I was going to say something, but I lost my train of thought. There's a little bar that's in the that's in this piece. <laughs> that, that's that's in all our pieces. Play. It's almost been in every play we do. The little bar. Did it did it start in solitude? Where did it start? Dementia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it started in dementia. It's been There's in dementia. It's been in solitude. It's been in that, that little bar cart. Yeah, it's in all, in all of our plays. <laughs> and that now. It's like we have to put it in because if we, you know, it's like it's tradition, we're, tradition, we're breaking tradition if we don't put in the little bar cart. <laughs> what is? Yeah, what was it? Know, I was I was thinking about uh, movement and dancing with props, and I remember that. Okay, so it's a funeral. So how are we going to represent that? Okay, we're all in black, and then there's a spotlight on the urn, right? So that represents the deceased, and that was really. An urn that belonged to wasn't it your aunt Evelina? Oh, yes. Yeah, it was my aunt. It was she's my aunt Connie's, Connie's urn. Her ashes weren't in it anymore. We had already spread them in Arizona, but I did. Oh wow! I did use her her box. It has her name on it. Um, and then I remember you told me, you know, she always wanted to be on stage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I thought she would. I thought she would like. Yeah, and then it was so <laughs> the end of the the funeral scene, and so we have to transition, and who's going to pick up the urn? And so Jeff, so Leslie <laughs> tells Jeff to pick it up, and I was just thinking, this is so funny because there he is dancing with his urn down. You know, <laughs> I don't know. It's just very funny, but it worked. We cleared the urn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was it? What was it, you got to tour this play, as we mentioned, the Bay, Denver, Miami. What was the difference in, in, in how it was received audience-wise, like Los Angeles to all these other cities? I think it's, I, I think it's a different play. I, no, I noticed it um, watching it last night. I noticed that it took the audience a little while to kind of adjust to they're like, what is this? Because it's very different, you know? And when I was watching the prologue when we're all moving around and stuff, I turned to Jose Luis, I said, we're so weird. But, <laughs> but you know, to me, that's a positive. But um, but I, it was interesting because I think in San Jose, they, they – loved it and in san francisco they loved it but i think in miami they it, they might have been a little bit more reserved about well, first of all um it wasn't a chicano audience in miami and you also we were doing it for a spanish language theater festival we were the only right. english speaking production that, yeah yeah so that was kind of a uh, strange no, short, yeah. eyes, short eyes was also in english Oh, it was there? I forgot. Yes. English, too. There were two of them. Yeah, both of our plays went. <laughs> yeah. Short Eyes was there, and we were there. And I think people really love Short Eyes. Um, and I, I still think they really didn't know what to make of, of our show. I, I feel like they were a little tentative, more tentative than, say, San Jose, Denver, and mm. San Francisco, you know? So... But it was great. I mean, I think it's always great to take our work out, 
you know, and, and we haven't, we haven't done it since we went to Boston with uh, premeditation. Solit Solitude was our first uh, venture out of LA. Yeah. yeah. So, um, were, yeah. Were those stages, uh, how were the difference in, in stage wise, uh, was like, was there different choreography because of the different sizes of stages or, or did that sort of stay the same throughout? I, if there were any adjustments, I don't think there were major adjustments. Were there at any oh, cool. theater? I don't think so. But I remembered the thought, I was, what I was going to say, and when you were asking me about props and furniture, that again, you know, I feel that the filling up the time with the, the slow movement was very challenging. There's a whole monologue. It went on forever where they're at the table. And, you know, you're trying to not repeat the movements. That was really challenging. And everyone going at the same speed. So I felt that that was more challenging than the props and the furniture, actually, for this particular section. Yeah. And, you know, your penny is pretty meticulous about, you know, what the silhouette looked like. I feel like there were a lot of silhouettes that she worked on in, mm. in, in solitude more than in any of our other plays. But because, uh, you know, we were all on stage and doing slow motion. So she was also always very concerned about what our movements were, the pacing of our movements, you know. And the great thing about your Benny is like, especially for me and Lucy, like she always wants us to look good, right? She doesn't want us to look bad. So she tells us, you know, how to cross our legs, how to hold our legs, how to, you know, hold our, our shoulder or elbow or how to hold your... It's, it's all, you know, and when she does it, it's so easy and graceful. <laughs> and then when we do it, well, I mean, we try our best. Well, and the other thing too, uh, speaking again to, to, to your Benny's talent and, and working with what she has, she will let you kind of- Those lemons. Make, lemons. Uh, she'll let you, okay, well, uh, you know, if, if you have to freeze or if you have to do a movement, what's your movement? Find your movement. What, what are you comfortable with? And then she'll she'll come and she'll tweak it, you know, make it look better. But she begins with with the actor, you know, what can you do? Right. She's not gonna make you go on point if you know you not do that. Right. And I think it's it's also what's 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 really un I mean not unique, but it's like the continuing of of movement, right? If there's a scene going, there's something happening in this in the background. Uh, that's one of the things that I noticed. Um, in probably a lot of the plays, like if you, you know, you, I, that's what we have people coming three times, four times to a lot of the plays that the company does is that you, you start seeing all these different things that are happening. There's silhouettes in the background, there's <laughs> movements, there's these stories that are being played. And Yerbeni, are those developed like as the, the, as the plays being developed? Or, I mean, I know that, I, I mean, I've been a part of the productions also that, you know, we start day one, it's like the first, 15 minutes we're working on these movements and then I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this repetitive thing that it, then it, it, the story, I'd like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, it sort of all gets plugged in at some point and, 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 and right. try to, to bring together what what might seem at times a chaos, especially as it, we come to the end, kind of make it make sense. But yeah, we bring it all together, the actors contribute, um, but yeah, it, it's, it, it has always been a development between everyone, the designers and the, the actors, collaboration. the collaborations to bring it all together. And eventually it, it, it all comes together at the end. But um, yeah, it starts, like I said, with really broad strokes and you just start, oh yeah, we're gonna do that, that you know, developing the style and the mood and all of that. But yeah, it, it, uh, it's done. If I might, if I might add too, Yerbs, that you know the company itself has been together for over thirty years. So there's a lot of things we don't we don't question. If Jose Luis says or Yerbeni says, just move and you know do a lunge, do a jumping jack, do a push up, do whatever. Uh, you know, not it's, it's not so much. You know, we've gotten to the point where we don't. It, 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 it it's like okay, what does this mean? How do, and then we try to interpret it. You know. Whereas right. when, uh, uh, as, as we have tried to expand bringing in other uh, outside company members to our process, you really see uh, how far we've come as a company and you, you can really see how hard it is for someone who hasn't been part of that process, how it's difficult for them to understand 
part of our process that that well why why am i doing a lunge if i'm in a boxing ring it makes no sense to me it's like well the more you question it the more you're resisting and not being part of that flow whereas i think as a company we've gotten to that point where we let it go and it and urbany and jose luis will make it work in however way it's going to work or sometimes it we even come up with something that that's come out of that that's been added to it so that's you know that's been the beauty of that our process in terms of incorporating movement into our pieces right i think uh sal you were mentioning some something about that earlier where you know you have this text and you you're workshopping and doing and you know there's probably a movement i think uh, i don't know if it was jeff or sal you cross you know the pensinas and then and, and then right it's and it's that's part of the process of building this these plays with as a company right yeah i mean you know uh when we're when we're either improvising or moving to the music i mean i think you know evelina is very smart to use music in her plays because uh music really uh it feeds you, you know, as an artist mm -hmm. and it, it feeds the style it feeds the tempo it feeds uh, it feeds you creatively in terms of what in terms of what you're feeling and uh and so because of that, sometimes things come out of that, right? Just viscerally, you know, you will move because the music is moving you in a certain way. And so yeah. if, you're, if you're moved to do the raising of the hand slowly because that's what the, the music is calling you to do, then we do it and we all do it together and it becomes a thing, you know? So that's yeah. what people I also like the way that the music is used in the transitions to the transitions further the story. And so it's it's never just we're going to the next scene. You actually are seeing something that's adding to the story. I think my favorite one in this is that the intermission ends and then it picks up with the same dance number, so to speak, or the same movement. And then there's this strange um uh, interaction with the with the um, actors that you see you see that well you see the characters developing the storyline but there's no there's no text there right you see Sal's right. character and, and Evelina's character having a really good time you see something going on with the man and Sonia you see and it, just, <laughs> it furthers the story without ever having had to like spell it out you just realize that they're, they're in a different part of the of the evening now and and people are having a little much to drink and stuff like that so it was i think it's the music is used so beautifully the music and movement is used so beautifully in the transitions to further the narrative one of the reactions from an audience uh member i remember asking me sincerely how do you guys get through the play when you've been drinking so much you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're drinking the whole time once we get to you know uh, Gabriel's house, but I'm obviously we're not drinking real, you know. It's it's always a uh, and it's always a, a big uh, not a big, but it's always a major job for the stage manager filling up these bottles with you know cranberry juice, juice, juice. and you know it's uh, yeah grape juice, making sure that it's the right color, etc., to make it look like wine. But yeah, it's. Uh, but we did drink a lot in that play because I remember at intermission, Evelina how and I you do it, yeah. it to the restroom. Man. Like, oh, that's, the, that's probably the question, right? It's like, how did you do it? Especially in plays where you probably can't leave the stage. It's like you find that moment of like, you know. <laughs> and, 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 if I can, and if I can uh, piggyback on Sal's point too, the, the thing about this play, I think, with the music, the recorded music, but then having the cello, the cello is the closest to a human uh, voice. voice, and the tenor. It, it, it brought a different, yet another level to our production. You know, uh, mm -hmm. just having that one element, which you know, I cannot see doing that play without that. Now, you know, it's just you yeah. know, it's just such a, a neat thing that uh, we've incorporated the music and. Yeah, and Semyon, the way he just basically, like Sal said, he, he underscored the whole thing, which took some um, getting used to as an actor to have a live um, a musician, you know, playing right, right next to you on the, usually, you know, it's in the background or whatever, but he's a character and he's playing the, you know, the music right next to you. It took some adjusting. 
Um, but uh, my favorite part of the music uh, in Solitude, when I saw it last night, first of all, I saw things that I never knew were happening. <laughs> like well, during the, <laughs> during when, when um, Semyon is playing Besam and Mucho on the cello, I never knew Robert was doing that at the door. He was having his whole moment there. Yeah. You know, when I was saying to Jose Luis, what is he doing? I never knew he did that. Never. I was so <laughs> the slow mo we were doing over here. Right. I, you know, I, I thought I thought that's what was pe what people were looking at. Who uh, who knew he was like staying <laughs> focus way over there. It's so funny. But uh, I I thought. It was so um, unique to have a Mexican song played on the cello. Yeah, yeah right. The song that uh, that Sal sings, and it was so beautiful. And Jose Luis and I were like, when Sal was singing it, we're like, "Wow, he was singing it really good." Yeah, it was beautiful. Sang it so well. It was. That's like a beautiful moment in the, in the play. I mean, there are a lot of great moments in the play. I mean, yeah. I, I'm always so proud yeah, of my, my colleagues. Yeah, I think it's, that's a really unique as well. Uh, just that fact that, I mean, it's a ranchera, you know, it's a yeah. ranchera. <laughs> it's a ranchera. By a cello, you know, on a cello. It's really interesting, uh, you know, and. Uh, yeah, and it breaks because we've been using all this Perez Prado music all throughout, mm. and then this ranchera comes out at the almost the end. It's really cool. Yeah. On that, on that, I mean, I think that's one of the unique things um, about this sort of live platform. Like we never get to see ourselves perform. I mean, it's on fun. stage, like it's rare. I mean, it's probably like three minutes for some grant, right? I mean, what was what was it like for those that? I mean seeing yourself, I mean, I, I perform in this play or seeing the play, Avelina, you mentioned that seeing the play for the first time is probably going to be, I, I, for a lot of you, I mean, because you're all, you're in each play, it's like, what, what's, what, what were the emotions, feelings that you were feeling? I mean, I, we talked about like things that you were noticing or things that were happening. What was that like? Well, I can tell you how. Unlike them, I used to sometimes would watch it every night. <laughs> so there were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would see things, either things that would, if there was Fidel, there was sometimes people in the dance or whatever, Jeff on that table, every time I would, I couldn't look, he'd be like an inch away from the edge of that table. Yeah. I thought he was going to fall off that table. But I would see things like that every, almost every night. They, they didn't see a lot of this stuff. There would be certain things that either I would laugh at this all the time or just I can't watch because. Something's going to happen here. I remember yeah. when, when Jeff would jump on that table. I was like, oh my gosh. Oh, geez, I hope the brakes are on. I hope because the the, yeah. the, the table was on wheels and you had to put the brakes on. It's like, please, God, we, we put the brakes on. We put the brakes on. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kind of, putting their brakes on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Putting those brakes on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a treat, you know. It really was a treat because uh, I always, you know, sometimes you, especially in, when uh, a lot of, you know, we all have different monologues at different points and, and, we're, and we're moving in slow motion and we're going, when, when we're actually in the play, we're going, oh my gosh, you know, we've got another 10 minutes of this monologue. <laughs> but, but seeing it, the whole thing, it, it's really remarkable how it's, it's much more compelling than when you're on stage, you get to see what the other actors are doing and how the piece is working in, in its entirety and also appreciating the set and the lights and the sound it's you really get to appreciate it much more looking at it from and that from this perspective you know as a spectator yeah i also really liked how the set was so it was very uh stark very basic but very elegant that huge chandelier that i remember like Jose Luis couldn't get a chandelier big enough. He kept getting <laughs> different ones. I love chandeliers. <laughs> yeah, chandeliers. And then all those um, the glasses That's on top the of the of the piano and all. It was beautiful. That was Is scary. That the piano back there, Jeff. Yeah, that, that's the piano. I mean, there's a the piano back there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing about the, the thing about the glasses though, they weren't they weren't they were like 
150 wine glasses just stacked on top of each other on the piano. And in fact, throughout the whole run, I think we lost two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two two wow. broke. Two broke. Uh, but that, yeah, that was, that was always scary, jumping up onto that platform with the piano and the glasses. Jeff, yeah. what was it like watching, watching yourself um, in this play? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm you gonna, were really good in it, Jeff. Oh, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't watch it. Uh, I didn't watch it, and I was talking to Lucy earlier about this. Oh, was there a game? Was there a game? No, there was no game. <laughs> there was. Uh, I like what I you know when I do my TV and film work. You know, when people say, "Don't you watch it?" And it's like I'll, I'll watch it later sometimes, but uh, I was there. I was part of it, and I want to have my own. Um, visual yeah. of it of how I want it I think it went and I don't want to be uh, disappointed you don't want to burst your bubble. <laughs> yeah I, I don't want to be disappointed but I, I I'll watch it I'll watch it probably before it goes off and um, uh, but you know I mean what's what's great is that you know uh, the company and Jose Luis has given us all equal opportunity time to to carry a show and uh, I felt blessed that you know that was a chance for me to help carry I mean we were always an ensemble a lot of times there is no lead. We're all equally uh, sharing the stage and carrying the show. Um, this this story happened to be about my character, Gabe, but, um, you know, everyone from Robert to Fidel to Simeon to, you know, all the ladies all had their stories that, that carried throughout this piece. So, um, you know, so I just I feel always blessed working with the company. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, think that... that um, what I appreciated about the play was that, yes, like Lucy says, I, I love the design, I love the elegance of it. And at the same time, and, and a lot of the, the dialogue is pretty, um, um, what am I saying? Not elevated, but um, help me, Lucy. It's, Not elevated? It's sophisticated, it's, you know, it's have your body. Yeah. Well, I think it jumps back and forth from very real characters that you grew up in the neighborhood, and maybe you don't expect them to speak like this, right? And to have deep thoughts, and yes. I think that's, that that is one of your gifts. That um, the the I guess like the maybe the stereotype of of what people think this character might say. You always kind of blow. I mean, you you blow that expectation because they'll end up speaking very poetically sometimes or have very deep thoughts and express them in a very lyrical way that, yeah, it does elevate the language and it elevates the characters. Yeah. They're not, they're not just like this one dimensional poor guy from the neighborhood that never made it out kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even though like Johnny didn't leave the neighborhood, but you know, he had some, so some profound uh, things yeah. to say, you know, and he was the one that calls um, Gabe out, you know, on him being ashamed of his mother and all of that stuff. And I think I, watching premeditation and then watching solitude, I guess that um, I, I think they're very um, elegant. And at the same time, they're, they're very Chicano, you know, the, the, the characters are Chicanos because that's what we are. We're Chicanos and and we I write the plays for the people in our company and that's who we are, right? And when I talk to writers that, you know, want to write about the their experience, I always say that I look to I look for the beauty, right? Look for the beauty in your community. You know, I remember um when we lived in East LA and Jose Luis would have profound conversations with the, with the men down the block, you know? And I used to get so mad, he would go for a long time and I'm like, where are you? And he's like drinking beers with them, but having like some very profound conversations, you know, about books and, you know, about humanity and the world and stuff like that. And, so those are the kinds of things I like to explore, you know, in the in the Chicano reality. Yeah. Folks, if you have a question, please type it in the comment sections and we'll try to answer it before we wrap up at eight o'clock. 
Um, I also want to remind you that you can see Solitude until September 3rd at 11.59 p.m. Jeff, um, and whoever hasn't watched it, <laughs> youtube.com, the Latino Theater Company, or the LAG <laughs> forward slash live, and also check out Free Meditation. We have a conversation tomorrow for August 29th and our first online live reading um, this Friday of August, this Friday, August 29th, 28th of August 29th. This is a tricky date. That's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> that is confusing. Fidel, did you get to watch the play? Oh, no. uh, yeah, I did, I did. No, I did. Fidel. What was it like watching um like a, an online? Yeah, performance? I did. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think it's interesting because I I I find myself like wanting to see the bigger picture too. Like everybody said, I think that's what I really liked about premeditation too was like getting that wide wide view and and you get all the stage mm. play. Um, but but it was it was still. I mean, you know, it, it was funny because we haven't done it in so long, and I you know you kind of forget the play, but then as soon as you start. <laughs> hearing that you remember everything and you're like, whoa, it all starts yeah. coming back. Um, but you know, I, I thought it was interesting, you know, the fact that like, you know, even in this play at the end, there's there's a message of social justice and, and change and like how much of that is happening now, you know, like in, in a in a more magnified way even, you know what I mean? But like even at that time, you know, there there was there was things going on socially that I think, you know, we were always trying to allude to. So I think just seeing that, you know, a as much as things have changed, things are the same in many ways, you know what I mean? And how like that struggle continues. So, you know, I thought it was interesting in that way. And also just seeing Gabriel's kind of like, you know, his big uh, dilemma is, you know, uh, sacrificing his the comfort of his life and his accomplishments for the reality of who he is, you know, and confronting that and going back to his neighborhood and all this stuff. So. I thought it's interesting too because that seems to be a conflict for some people right now is like you know what are they willing to sacrifice in terms of you know their own personal comfort and their own personal mm. uh accomplishments you know in terms of you know their success or the personal success and what are they willing to put on the line for you know to make some real change in the world so i thought that 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 that's what what was what stuck with me the most nice we have uh one comment or question here it says rosie g <laughs> from san from san jose she'd like to know what everybody's drinking uh, <laughs> a lot of down cranberry juice wasn't it right now right now or in the play no i think right now she's oh, okay. right now i i i may i've been since it's been so hot in la i've been making sun tea every other day so i'm drinking my sun tea <laughs> i i I've had like matcha tea today, too. Two, two cups of green tea, and right now I'm drinking water. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, it's Rosie Guerrero. <laughs> that it is. Guerrero. Guerrero. Just water. <laughs> hey, Joni. Joni Shady, I want to do she says, Jonay say, I watched premeditation last week and I commented to myself on how beautiful Sal and Evelina's dance, dance was. was. Mm -hmm. Saying to myself that I didn't know she danced. Looking forward to watching Solitude. Thank you for being a such wonderful theater. I miss it so much. Thank you, Jonay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, we fooled them again, Sal. <laughs> <laughs> Yerbeni, there you go. <laughs> but you know what? The other day, Sal found um, uh, he's been, you know, he doesn't have anything to do right now. So he's like been going through all his, uh, his old footage and he has come across some amazing footage of stuff. And um, he found footage of the very first one act of premeditation with oh, that wow. did with that he did with Angela Moya before I played Esmeralda, Angela played Esmeralda, and there's the dance. Now they're two they're real dancers, right? 
like Sal and Angela are dancers. So I, it was so good. That was like a good dance, man. Hilarious. But, um, very, very funny. Well, then you got stuck later. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, I have been uh, I've been trying yeah. just you know a lot of VHS to digital, and I found these uh, these interviews mm. that we did. Uh, I mean, because this relates to what you're going to be talking about next, which is August 29th, and I found some interviews with uh, that we did in while searching while doing research for the play, and I found I found uh, interviews with Sal Castro and Steve Weingarten, who was a journalist, and uh, uh, Lauren Miller, who was now a judge, or just was a judge when we interviewed him, and was a good friend of Ruben Salazar, and it just and then and then I also found uh, some early work uh, workshops that we were doing, the company was doing, and this mm. one, which uh, Evelina shares her uh, her experience at the march at the moratorium rather, <laughs> and uh, it's pretty cool. We should we should, we should show some of that. Yeah, oh, yeah. Awesome. Maybe we'll show some of that when we uh when we have the discussion about August 29th. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that's tomorrow. Okay. Oh, that's tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so tomorrow we'll have a, a discussion about August 29th. Then we'll have the live online reading. Well, it's not live, but um, August 29th on demand from uh, Friday, August 28th, all the way to Sunday, September 6th. Uh, you only have a couple more nights to see premeditation actually tonight, all the way until tomorrow at 11.59. And solitude all the way to September 3rd. So visit our website, the LATC.org forward slash live or youtube.com slash Latino Theater Company. Um, and, then, and then coming up next week, we have La Olla and the Last Angry Brown Hat. We'll be presenting also an archival footage of This is a Man's World, written and directed, written and performed by Sal. Um, and coming up, so many other works. We have two projects or three um, every single week. So visit our website so you can find out more of that information. Folks, thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. That is all for tonight. We hope to see you tomorrow for August 29 conversation and our online reading. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>